Hey guys, today we are going to look at completing the square when a is greater than 1. So in standard form, the x squared is going to have a coefficient that is larger than 1. We're going to answer the question, how do I solve quadratics by completing the square when a is greater than 1? So remember the goal of completing the square is to create that binomial squared on one side of the equation so that we can take the square root. So you can follow the steps below to solve an quadratic equation by completing the square when a is, that's supposed to say, greater than 1. So the first thing you need to do is get the x's on one side and the constant on the other. And then we need the x squared to be by itself so that we can make that perfect square trinomial. So we're going to divide the entire equation by a. That's the only new part compared to when a is 1. So the first step is the same, we rearrange it, and then the second step is what is new, we will divide everything by that coefficient. And then after that, we still are going to find c by doing b over 2 squared and adding this to both sides of the equations to create that perfect square trinomial. And then we can factor it to write it as a binomial squared, and then we will solve using the square roots method. So again, the only new thing is dividing the equation by a, so that we can create that perfect square trinomial. So let's look at number one. It is already in the correct form. I have the x's on one side and I have the number on the other, but I have an issue. The x squared is not by itself yet. So I'm going to divide everything by a two. I'm doing it so that I can get rid of this coefficient, but whatever I do to one part of the equation, I have to do to the rest of it. So I'm dividing everything by two. And then that simplifies to x squared minus 4x equals negative 3. And now I can solve this like I have with all my other completing the square problems. I want to make the left side a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to find b over 2 squared and add it to both sides. So negative 4 divided by 2 squared would be negative 2 squared and negative 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And I get x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 1. Now I want to factor the left side of the equation to create that binomial squared. So I'm going to figure out what multiplies to positive 4 and adds to negative 4, which would be negative 2 and negative 2. So that factors into x minus 2 times x minus 2 or x minus 2 squared equals 1. And now I've created this binomial squared so I can solve using the square roots method and I get x minus 2 equals square root of 1 is positive or negative 1. And now I'm going to add 2 to both sides, and I get x equals positive 2 plus or minus 1. And now I just solve for both cases. 2 plus 1 is 3, and 2 minus 1 equals 1. So the solutions to this quadratic equation were 1 and 3. All right, let's look at number 2. So first thing I want to do is make sure that the x terms are on the left side and the constant terms are on the right side. So I need to add 64 to make that happen. And I get 4 x squared minus 24 x equals 0 plus 64 is 64. Okay, now I want to get this x squared isolated, so I'm going to divide everything in the equation by 4. And 4 x squared divided by 4 is just x squared. Negative 24 x divided by 4 is negative 6 x and 64 divided by 4 is 16. Okay, so I have it in the correct form. Now I can start completing the square by making that a perfect square trinomial. 
So I'm going to figure out what B over two squared is and add it to both sides. So I'm gonna do negative six over two squared, which is negative three, and negative three squared is positive nine. So I'm going to add nine to both sides. And then I get x squared minus six x plus nine equals 25. And now I want to factor this perfect square trinomial that I made. So I'm going to figure out what multiplies to nine and adds to negative six, which would be negative three and negative three. So that's going to factor into x minus three times x minus three. And it equals 25. And I can more simply write that as x minus three squared equals 25. And now I can solve this with the square roots method. We're gonna take the square root of both sides and we get x minus three equals positive or negative five. And then I add three to both sides and I get x equals three plus or minus five. And now I just solve for both cases, three plus five is eight and three minus five is negative two. So the solutions to this equation are negative two and eight. Okay, let's look at number three. So first thing I need to do is rearrange, get x's on the left side and constant on the right. So I just need to add nine to both sides to make that happen. And I get three x squared plus 30 x equals nine. And now I need to get the x squared isolated, so I'm going to divide everything in the equation by three. And I get x squared plus 10x equals three. Okay, now I can start completing the square that it's in the correct form. So I'm gonna figure out what b over two squared is to create that a perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to do 10 divided by two squared, which is five squared or 25. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. And I get x squared plus 10 x plus 25 equals 28. Now I want to turn this equation into a binomial squared, so I need to factor it. I need to figure out what multiplies to 25 and adds to 10, that would be five and five. So this is going to factor into x plus five times x plus five, and it equals 28. And I can simplify that by writing x plus five squared equals 28. And now we can solve by taking the square root of both sides and I get x plus five equals, the square root of 28 is not a perfect square, so for now I'm just gonna leave it as plus or minus the square root of 28. And then we subtract five from both sides and get x equals negative five plus or minus the square root of 28. Okay, there's two ways to write the answer now. The first thing that we can do is approximate the decimals. So I can figure out what negative five plus the square root of 28 is and what negative five minus the square root of 28 is. And then write those two decimals in curly brackets. So let's go ahead and do that. This will be our approximate answer. I'm gonna start with the negative five minus the square root of 28, since that'll be the smaller answer. And I get negative 10.29. And then negative five plus the square root of 28 is 0 0.29.
So there are the approximate decimals. The other thing we can do to get an exact answer is simplify the square root of 28. See if it has any perfect square factors. Breaks down to four and seven, four breaks down to two and two. So I have two times two times seven. So square root of 28 equals square root of two times two times seven. There's a perfect square factor, so it'll go outside as one and it'll equal two times the square root of seven. So I can replace the square root of 28 with two times the square root of seven. So the exact simplified answer would be negative five plus or minus two square root of seven. Okay, last one, I need to start by getting the x's on the left side and the constants on the other. So I'm going to add four to both sides. And I get five x squared plus 30 x equals 20. And then I need the x squared by itself, so I'm going to divide everything by five. And I get x squared plus 6x equals 20 divided by 5 is 4. And now I want to turn this left side into a perfect square trinomial. So I need to find b over 2, square it, and add it to both sides. So we're going to do 6 over 2 squared, which would be 3 squared, and add that to both sides. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. And I get x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 13. And now I want to factor this perfect square trinomial, figure out what multiplies to 9 and adds to 6, which would be 3 and 3. So that will factor into x plus 3 times x plus 3, and it equals 13. And that will simplify into x plus 3 squared equals 13. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and I get x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 13. And then we'll subtract three from both sides and I get x equals negative three plus or minus the square root of 13. Okay, there's two ways to write our answer since this is an irrational solution. The first thing that we can do is approximate the decimals and we will do that by doing negative three plus the square root of 13 and negative three minus the square root of 13. So let's start with the negative three minus the square root of 13, since that'll be the smaller answer. And we get negative 6.605, so negative 6.61, and then negative three plus the square root of 13 is 0 0.605, so 0 0.61. So there's the approximate decimal of the solutions. Let's see if we can write our exact answer simplified. Um, 13 does not have any other factors it breaks down into. It is prime, so it is already in the simplified exact answer. The exact answer we would write as negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 13.